So, the creation of an ecosystem is a curious thing. Without any control, you aim to put the groundwork for a complex system to flourish. For animals to reproduce. Ants, fish, amphibians, and bug one, two, three, and four. Can they all live together in harmony? Or will, you know, the system fall? Sometimes I wonder if a successful vivarium is only due to luck. But luckily for us, this enormous vivarium is successfully going strong after three years. But lots has happened since. We lost sight, you know, in an update. So let's chronologically step back into the reality that you have already seen in the previous updates, in this cinematic introduction. Just as a quick recap before we start. As you can see, the vivarium is already filled with larger organisms thriving in a spacious and diverse environment. But what about the ants? You know, our friends? Hmm, well, let's start from the beginning. In short, it started out before the creation of the larger vivarium, where in a smaller one I was conducting an experiment to see if European fire ants and Laceus umbratus ants could coexist well which turned out to be true in this case. Raising the Laceus umbratus colony was a hassle as they are socially parasitic, needing slave ants from another ant colony to start their own colony. More about that in a previous video. But luckily for us, the process went well and they were quickly added to the vivarium. As were the fire ants. both later displaying interesting behaviours we saw in the last episode, especially the fire ants, as my external offerings were now safely transported into the nest for consumption. We also had a mad Camponotus ant queen, if you remember, freely traveling outside her claustral chamber in a log, and one day she decided to kill herself by attacking another Camponotus colony that I intentionally introduced a week before. It was a great pleasure to introduce and observe all these ants in the vivarium. But unlike the larger organisms, some of these colonies died out after a year. Which is fair, as statistically it was bound to happen in a natural environment as well. I was counting on it. The most important thing to me was that it is not due to overpopulation of the tank with a crazy amount of ant species. And it did not seem like that was the case. It was just due to the queen dying or possibly that the conditions in the tank were not right for them. You never really know. But where there is death, there is also life as you can see comparing these two fungi. <laughs> the Laceus umbratus colony is still going strong. Still see these yellow ants foraging around and I'm sure they have an aphid farm in the root systems of certain plants around the vivarium. As long as they can escape the spiders, of course. <laughs> then we have an elusive Temnothorax colony. And it is possible that there are more than one colonies inside as well. I always see one or two workers foraging in the tank. Similar, but much more present, is a massive Leptothorax colony. They always show up for honey offerings and 
Here I managed to catch them moving nests. You got to admit that watching ants move in such a coordinated way is truly something marvelous that I could spend hours watching. These guys can live further up north than most ant species, surviving minus 30 degrees or more outside. And funnily enough, there was a small temnothorax worker that diligently observed them move out of their nest as well. But let's move on to larger things, as I have an amazing surprise for you guys that are fans of the ants in the vivarium. But that is for later in the update, sorry to tease you. I am unsure how the two door head ant queens inside are doing. As you can see, they are pretty cool with a flat shaped head that they used to block the nest entrance with. I introduced them a year ago, so not certain if I should be seeing them or any workers yet, but that also stands true for all the countless queens we have seen inside that I have not intentionally put in. Only time will tell if they have survived and if they have workers. All right, let's get to the newer updates now, starting with one of the scorpions. There are two of them inside and they can survive with like five pill bugs a year, apparently. This means that they don't come out to hunt often, so I really don't see them much, as they often stay in their burrows somewhere. Last time I saw one was two months ago and that was in hiding as well. It looked well fed though, you can see the fat gaster back there, a bit of a Kim K scorpion. However, one of them did not far so well. It had definitely drowned in the pond. I don't know if it is because the scorpions are just inherently incompatible with water bodies in their enclosures, but I simply assumed the tank was natural enough for this not to be an issue. In fact, I even count on certain organisms drowning in order to feed the aquatic wildlife, like a proper natural cycle. Anyways, I took the scorpion out to feed it to the terrestrial inhabitants instead. Sorry, aquatic guys. And I put a time lapse and thought it would be a chill little scavenging video, but no. This progressively became a brutal feast. I mean, the isopod just pushed it off the stone and they just started eating it so quickly. After one night, there was only one thing left, and that was... Oh wait, Mr. Isopod, could you push it forward a little bit so people can properly see the... Yeah, thanks, that's perfect. Well, the stinger, which makes sense since it's quite hard to eat and venomous. <laughs> but scavengers don't always have to be animals though. Slime mold and fungi, as you have seen, are also present in the vivarium. But you might be wondering why I'm bringing this up, and that is because a massive penis mushroom has been seen in the vivarium. It 
all started out as a little egg. A very cute round white egg. Doesn't look much like a penis, but you just wait. Hey, Mr. Worm, I'm filming here. Please get... Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, um, thanks, I guess. All right, well, here we go. Now the frame is perfectly unobstructed. And... Shoff! Impressive, no? That is a massive structure. Some of these mushrooms are less lucky though and then up growing underground. And others are quickly eaten by other animals. So, is this the highlight of the vivarium update, you might wonder? Ants are happy and, you know, the big animals. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, roaming around like massive dinosaurs inside the vivarium. It is feasible that I've forgotten, like, the biggest thing of this update that has to do with one of these large animals, and it has to do with the salamanders. They have been having some sexy time since last time. And as you can expect, this led to nothing. At first, <laughs> I was constantly checking for nothing until nothing again. But I promise you this time I was checking even more and Small little newts started to appear in the pond. This was incredibly exciting. Like the cutest little things I've ever seen. I just had to have a closer look and took some of them out from the vivarium for closer inspection. They have such cool external feathered gills that they fold as they swim, which is pretty epic if you ask me. This happened just as I was introducing shrimp into the aquatic area to help the fish clean the environment as well. So the pond at this moment was just teeming with life. I was quite worried actually, it was not planned. But oh boy, the shrimp were so cool to watch. Grooming, cleaning, grooming, cleaning. Grooming again, and, you know, cleaning again. But teeming with life, I did something I rarely do, because intentionally feeding the vivarium with food is not something I intend to do, because it could dysregulate the vivarium when I'm not present there and not feeding them. But this time I gave them frozen tubifex worms, and as a result, I saw some amazing footage. Enjoy the aquatic feeding time, I mean, it's just, I could watch this all day long. And yeah, it's not that aesthetic because the salamanders, most of them had moved to the back of the pond by the water pump. They really had a fiesta back there, but it's, it's still cool to watch, you know, without the algae and all that stuff. I mean, the, the babies just kept on eating, and luckily the shrimp were too fast for them to get eaten by anybody, even the fish actually. Uh, but I'm not sure what else the newts were eating though. 
I saw them constantly grazing the bottom, maybe filtering out nutrients. I'm not sure, but pretty cool. I have barely had to feed them myself, actually. Observing them, I just could not help but observe the weird plant that was growing on the separator between land and water in the tank. Looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Any ideas what this could be? I mean, look at those roots. Or whatever it is. But yeah, except that the pond was now dreamlike. Here I will show you the last footage from this season now. See the grazing shrimps, snails, and the occasional newt? So cool. And as you would expect, small baby salamanders started popping up on the terrestrial terrain as well, that looked much more like their mommies and daddies than the newts. Still quite clumsy though. <laughs> Probably like their parents though, because they are quite clumsy as well, actually. Hopefully most of them are out of reach for larger reptiles, even their parents, because I've heard they could be cannibalistic. The fact that all these newts and the tadpole that turned into a massive toad previously successfully did this in this vivarium with so little intervention is just a testament for how great this vivarium is. I have said this before, but it's just incredible generating such a massive eating machine like this. I mean, have a look at it eating this worm. It started out as so small, I have not fed it since, and look at that. As a sherry on top though, <laughs> there is more ant stuff. As I was filming the yellow Laceus umbratus colony tunneling underground next to other subterranean organisms, such as, you know, pill bugs or centipedes, I saw something that made me gasp. It was a massive Camponodus lignipurdus worker. I immediately stopped watering the vivarium where I thought they were nesting after I followed them around and placed a test tube with honey to lure them out. And what do you know? They actually moved in. I mean, it was too good to be true. I, I did not believe that was gonna work. I, I was expecting some workers, maybe a satellite nest, but yes, they came out and you can see the queen and all the eggs. They quickly moved out from the test tube again though, and I didn't dare separate the tube from the rest of the vivarium, so I let them go, all of them. But I do see them tending scale insects every morning now, since I discovered them last fall. 
they seem to be doing this on more than one plant as well, which is great as it makes their source of nutrition more robust and, you know, diverse if one of the plants dies. I guess this colony or queen came with one of the logs I put inside and I have just not seen them since I made a vivarium years ago. A crazy story. So this vivarium now hosts a surprise mega large ant species. Incredible. Hopefully they will grow into a large colony that maybe supports a hundred workers in this vivarium. They are already much more active around offerings than before, which is great. So let's hope. Then you have the underdogs in each vivarium update. The individual bugs that can be found in the leaf litter and underground. I really need to do more work on these guys and properly finish our food web we started working on last update. Such incredible diversity that supports everything inside. I mean, have a look. And all the colors as well. It's just, I, I, I can never stop watching the vivarium when I'm there. It's quite distracting actually from work. But hey, in order to find out how the salamander babies, the surprise Camponotus colony, and remaining staggering diversity in the vivarium is doing, I'm sorry to tell you that you will need to subscribe and await the next update that will come. I take my time. So, this has been Nordic Ants, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching.